welcome back to my channel. After having covered wedding stationery in large and very comprehensively in my last video, we want to address today one element, one very elegant and timeless element in wedding stationery, and these are wedding monograms. Now, wedding monograms will help you realize wedding stationery that will be even beautiful or considered to be beautiful in years to come. And it's not gonna go with trends because it's so classical. So now let's start by defining what is a wedding monogram and more importantly, what is it not? Because when you go into the web and you search for wedding monograms, you also see sometimes the full first names of the couple written out and it is designated or said to be a wedding monogram. Well, it is not. A wedding monogram consists of the initials of the first names of the couple. So they can be two letters, or if you have double first names like Anna Christina, it can be, and then Peter, then it can be ACP, but it's not gonna be the three letters one after the other. They have to be combined to a symbol. So they have to form a symbol. There is such a beautiful symbolism to it because it's like kind of, uniting your names together and this can be done in a very very beautiful way now let's have a look at some examples because otherwise it's very difficult to get some inspiration and i think very good examples are always royal families you know me in the meantime i always refer to them when they do things right and the swedish royal family has beautiful wedding monograms and we will have a look at them but before that we have to know that obviously uh, King Carl Gustav, he had his own monogram before getting married in the 70s to Queen Sylvia and also she becoming queen, she also got her Sylvia monogram and then they had to have one as a couple. Same is true for their children, so for Crown Princess Victoria and her husband Daniel, so they each have their monogram and then they have their couple's monogram. And this has, of course, to resemble each other, but then again, it has to be put together to a very harmonious, beautiful symbol. And the same is true for any other child of the royal couple. So we have Carl Philip and his wife Sophia, etc. So now let's have a look at, for example, King Carl Gustav and um, his wife Sylvia. You can see now in his monogram, obviously he as the king and she as the queen a queen, um, they have a crown above this monogram. Well, we shouldn't do that because we are not king and queen, but there are the crowns that you find in their coat of arms. But please don't be mistaken, a wedding monogram has nothing to do with the coat of arms. It's just for the members of a royal family. They take the very crown of their coat of arms and they place it over it because it's the crown of their very kingdom. But of course, all other royal families in Europe do the same. So we have uh, Queen Maxima and uh, King Wilhelm Alexander from the Netherlands or for example um, King Felipe and Queen Leticia from Spain and we have of course uh, Albert and Charlene from Monaco etc. And I think these are great inspirations. Now you must might ask yourself well Joanna but um, where do they get it done? They maybe have special people doing it for them. Yes, for example, for the Swedish royal family, it's an heraldic artist. His name is Vladimir A. Sagerlund, and he is doing all the monograms for the royal family. But there are heraldic artists in your very country that you can search in the web. But if they only do crests or coat of arms, then you can also ask, for example, a calligraphist or a, a good graphic artist to do a monogram like you want it. And I think it's much more beautiful than this simple Mr. and Mrs. also on the buffet. And uh, you can have it obviously, as I mentioned, on all the wedding stationery, but even later on as a couple, when you uh, send out invitation cards for a very elegant event, um, or be it for a christening or something, it becomes your brand and it accompanies you all your life. And I think this is the very nice thought behind it. Now, if you go for something that classical, I would also recommend that you go for very classical invitation or very classical wedding stationery. So for deckled edged paper or handmade paper, that would be really appropriate. And of course, that you would also choose a font that is rather classical and timeless. Now, I will also show you some monograms that are not that classical, that are a bit different. They are from, I think, the Norwegian royal family and from a few examples that I will pop up 
from the um, Danish royal family. So you see there are all sorts of styles. You are not bound to a certain style, you just need to brief the person who is going to realize the monogram for you that it definitely needs to be a symbol, the letters need to be brought together to a symbol and uh, I think it's a very, very beautiful idea. And if I recommend you to consider such an artwork and to realize your wedding stationer in such a way, that is also because I decided to do so myself. And should you be interested who did that for us, you will find it in the description box below. I will put down the reference. It's a German calligraphist near Aachen. And um, yeah, I guess online you can order your monogram from wherever you live in the world. And I think he did a very fine job. Um, I will put, pop up some examples of what he suggested. He came up with different suggestions so that you see the process. So these were the seven suggestions that we received from our calligraphist. So you see for all those seven versions, they are always, the, the letters are always linked to each other and form a symbol, just as we defined a monogram has to be. And uh, maybe you let me know which one you prefer from those seven options. Maybe um, yeah, giving them a number from one to seven, starting with one in the upper left and down below in the last row, uh, the right one being seven. So please let me know and I will reveal that we decided to go for this one. This was the first page of our wedding invitation, so the printing was not in black. It's a, it's like an eggplant brown, dark burgundy. And uh, so here you see again the different ones in one view. Um, yeah, and obviously it's a question of taste. Maybe you would have chosen another one. Could be interesting. Let me know which one you liked most. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, send me your questions and comments. I will be happy to answer them and looking forward to the next video. And there we will tackle fine jewelry, how you get really a lot of value for your money. And this is not by going into the shops of the established luxury brands, as you can probably imagine. Thank you for your time. Bye bye. Auf Wiedersehen und bis bald.